Well, good morning and welcome to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV Big Fox. I am your host, Frank Acom. I'm so glad that you could join us. We're broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio here on Marcus Street in Corning. We have a lot to catch up on at the very beginning of the program here. Later on, we'll be talking with Mike Royal and Kevin Falkenberg from the Twin Tiers Comic Con, which is this weekend at the Arnhem Mall. So we'll hear from them in just a little bit. First, a couple comments that I received yesterday after the program. First up, sad to say, this is in reference to a topic that we discussed yesterday. Sad to say, I think it will be similar to 2016, only flipped. The polls in Trump's lead will drive Trump voters to stay home and Dems to surge. That could be the case. We're going to talk about last night's um, GOP debate. Of course, uh, former President Trump was not a part of the debate, but uh, we'll talk about another major issue if we have the opportunity, which is um, messaging when it comes to abortion, because Democrats are um, going to run the next year will be all about abortion. The next comment, this was actually uh, commented on on a Yahoo News article, and someone sent this to me. Is there a more biased talker than Pumpkinhead Joe Scarborough? Excuse me. Too bad you don't get both sides without being biased like Frank Akam in your own old, old hometown where you didn't have such a hatred for Trump. Yes, I I understand that Scarborough has a connection here. We get it if you don't like Don, Don, but the imbecile with the same name as you in the White House is a peach like you. Well, there you go. That was commented on, uh, on a Yahoo News article. Thank you for sending that along. Okay, yesterday we talked about uh, the election results extensively. There is a topic that I missed, and I apologize to all of our friends in Hornell. This was brought to my attention yesterday, in well, two days ago, in Hornell. They went 11 for 11. 11 Republican candidates were victorious on election night, so congratulations to all of those on the screen. Now in Hornell, and think of how much this has changed in recent years. Used to be, I think, what you could call a Democrat stronghold. Now, Republicans are nine, are nine to one on the city council. So nine Republicans, one Democrat. You've got Republicans holding 14 of 15 elected positions. And again, on election night, they went 11 for 11. Amazing things happening in Hornell for the Republican Party. Okay, let's take our first break. As I mentioned, we're going to have our guest from Twin Tiers Comic Con coming up in just a little bit. Uh, we also have a, a couple of news topics that we have to catch up on. Obviously, we're going to talk about the debate last night. I'd love to have you weigh in if you watched. What did you think? Oh, look at this. Already getting a bunch of virtual waves. Thank you. If you're new to the program, you can always send in a wave. Or if you walk by, you can wave. Uh, and that's a little counter on the bottom of the screen. But let's take our first break. We will be back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV. Big Fox, stay with us. <laughs> We are back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Hagan, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. Before we talk about the debate, this crossed my show prep this morning uh, at a time when we've talked about, especially New York policies, uh, looking at uh, going all electric very quickly. Quote, nation at risk of winter blackouts as power grid remains under strain. That is the headline. I think it goes without commenting what that would mean for us in our area if we were to lose power for extended periods of time in the winter. I know uh, Congressman Langworthy has talked about it, what that would mean. I know Assemblyman Phil Palmasano uh, has talked about it at length. And when Phil talks about it, it's not hyperbole. It will lead to deaths. Okay, let's talk about Last night's GOP debate, the former president, not a part of the debate, holding a rally instead. Let's take a look at the numbers. That's the speaking time from last night. Uh, Tim Scott weighing in with the most speaking time, 18 minutes, 55 seconds. Most opinion pieces that I read did not rate Tim Scott 
well, they, they don't rate him negatively necessarily. They just suggest um, for him and Chris Christie and maybe Ramaswamy, who though, according to the Drudge Report poll this morning when I checked, uh, came in second yesterday, but they're suggesting they drop out and make it a Haley DeSantis race. But we look at the time Haley coming in second, Ramaswamy, and those two went at it a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. And then DeSantis is 16 minutes, 19 seconds, and then Christie just a little under that. Uh, do you realize that the NBC moderators did not ask a single question about the southern border until 90 minutes into the debate? Now, that may be one of the problems of going to NBC for the debate. They don't want to bring up an issue that concerns so many Americans and that the Republicans have the winning argument on. So 90 minutes in to the GOP debate. CNN put together their takeaways and their winners and their losers. And I always like to look at uh, what CNN has to say because obviously it's not a uh, it's not friendly turf, so to speak, for Republicans. So you've got to look at what they're saying. You know, that's why I'm so critical and it's not of Nikki Haley the person. I'm just always critical when you see the media praise a Republican because you've got to keep in mind the mainstream media uh, does not have the Republicans' best interest at heart. But according to CNN, the takeaways from the third debate is that foreign policy takes center stage. And DeSantis had uh, very good answers on this. One, one quote that he had was, I'd be telling Bibi, meaning Benjamin Netanyahu, finish the job once and for all with these butchers. Nikki Haley saying similar. The first thing I said to him when it happened was, I said, finish them, meaning Hamas. Uh, Ramaswamy comparing um, Zelensky almost uh, to a Nazi, that was strange. But he did continue by saying to frame this as some kind of battle, meaning this is Ukraine you know, moving from Israel to, to the Ukraine fight, saying to frame this as some kind of battle between good versus evil, don't buy it. Next up on takeaways from the third Republican presidential debate before we go to break. It was like Tuesday night never happened, meaning there was not a clear message on uh, abortion. Um, now, I, I don't necessarily agree that there wasn't a clear message. Um, there was, they just had different messaging. You know, Nikki Haley saying uh, more middle of the road kind of approach, I'm not quoting her, but that, you know, that kind of idea. Um, Scott, Senator Scott stood by his calls for a 15 week federal ban. So it's not that, they don't have uh, plans on this or opinions on this. Uh, it's just that there isn't one consistent message between all in the Republican Party. Next up, DeSantis and Nikki Haley spar over China. Yeah, that got kind of interesting. DeSantis saying, well, Haley, she welcomed them into South Carolina, meaning China. Gave them land near a military base. Wrote the Chinese ambassador a love letter saying what a great friend they were. That was like their number one way to do economic development. Uh, some in the media critical of that term love letter saying, for lack of a better term, misogynistic. There was a couple, uh, who was it that called Nikki Haley, uh, Dick Cheney and Heels. So there was a lot of criticism of the, the quote unquote mansplaining to her and the, I guess maybe not misogynistic, but sexist attacks. Um, he continued, this is DeSantis, in Florida, I banned China from buying land in the state. We kick the Confucius Institutes out of our universities. We recognize the threat and we've acted swiftly and decisively. Decisively. And finally, Ramaswamy comes out swinging. And that's when they got in a feud with Halley. Uh, there's been some criticism of Ramaswamy's performance uh, going back to maybe the original performance, kind of smug and arrogant. And then finally, there was one more. Christie and Scott become the fringe candidates. How could that be, CNN? Wasn't CNN the one that was just praising Chris Christie? When he first came out attacking Trump nonstop, boy, oh boy, was he, he was just the best. He, I mean, he, he was going to be president practically. And now, now he turns into a fringe candidate. Well, when your whole campaign is uh, running with uh, name calling of Trump, it doesn't always work. That's all. Uh, but they wanted him so bad. They loved the, the attack dog, Chris Christie. When we come back, 
We're going to have a little more discussion on this, and then we're going to hear. No, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just looking at my break. Yes, let's take a break. A little bit later on, we're going to be talking to Mike Royal and Kevin Falkenberg from the Twin Tiers Comic Con. So stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking. <laughs> And we are back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. Let's take a look before our guests arrive. CNN has the winners and losers. And then we're going to get to a, a few pieces of, from the New York Post and elsewhere. Roxanne Jones says DeSantis finds his mojo. Those who are waiting to see if the man who dared to challenge to the party favorite was himself up to the challenge likely felt a little better about their chances after Wednesday night. Anna Marie Cox said, Halle carries off high heels and ghoulish saber rattling with a plum. This is one of the pieces I, I kind of hinted to uh, earlier, um, suggesting that there was mansplaining going on, that uh, Nikki Halle was being um, attacked in a kind of a sexist way. But at the same time, she doesn't like Nikki Haley. This is Anna Marie Cox saying, I don't agree with much she has to say, but I bristled in solidarity when Florida Governor Ron DeSantis dismissed the female politician's cordial correspondence with a Chinese official as a, quote, love letter. And when Vivek Ramaswamy employed gendered insults by referring to her as Dick Cheney in three-inch heels. Okay, so it was Ramaswamy who said that. Um, anyway, so it was, uh, I guess, a, a sexist performance. But Hallie isn't trapped in a workplace with no recourse but to make the best of things. She's propping up a party that's making things worse. So you see, here's someone that admits that she doesn't like Nikki Haley, would not want to see Nikki Haley win the presidency, but still, she's the savior of the party. Keep that in mind. Uh, Patrick T. Brown said Republican candidates are shifting their approach on abortion. We'll have a few articles about that later on. Dave and Mark, this is all the pundits, if you will, or the talking heads at CNN. The pugilistic populist version of Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy returns. And yes, there was quite a bit of criticism of him uh, looking smug and arrogant, which was one of the kind of takes off of the first debate. W. James Antle III says Haley takes a risk by evoking George W. Bush. Okay. Sophia Nelson, what Tuesday's election results taught those on the debate stage? Nothing. <laughs> you notice how it's a little stacked of, for so many uh, pundits at CNN. Doesn't seem to be too many that are positive on Republicans, is there? Max Burns, DeSantis showed more energy, but not more strategy. I know I'm just going through the headlines quick. See if you're new uh, to this piece. CNN puts together all their pundits, and I'm just reading the headline. Or not all their pundits, but a lot. Ra Raul A. Rees said, Candidates modeled Trump pushing misleading claims on immigration. Listen to this line. Keep this in mind. This is how they're going to spin what's happening at the border. But there's not yet substantial evidence to support this alleged link between illegal immigration and terrorism. While there has been an increase in the apprehension of individuals on the terrorism watch list in the last two years, they represent a tiny fraction of people processed along the border, nor are all people on this list terrorists. So, well, yeah, there's been quite a few people across the border that were on the terrorist watch list, but it's not, not as much as uh, number-wise as how many people are actually crossing our open, porous borders. Um, so really, there's, there's no link. <laughs> If one slipped through, it's too many. So are we talking one? Are we talking a hundred? Are we talking a thousand? What is a, what is not a substantial link and what is not a high number for Mr. Rees? Just uh, that's going to be how they spin it. The, the, you hear that a lot. Well, there's no substantial link. Well, let's look at the numbers, but we'll continue. Frida Giddis said the candidates should have saved their petty sniping and attack Trump and Biden. And finally, before we go to break, Jeff Yang said five candidates who likely won't ever be president. Let's be frank, he says. It's highly unlikely that any of the five Republican candidates who were on stage Wednesday night will be president in 2025 and maybe ever. 
There you are. That's CNN's takeaway. We're going to talk about New York Post's takeaway from it. But more importantly, I want to hear yours. I know there was a lot of other news that hopefully we can get to where you had um, Biden's brother and Hunter Biden being subpoenaed. Uh, we had Hillary Clinton on The View saying pretty horrific things uh, about Trump. Uh, there's uh, some other good opinion pieces just about all the topics going on throughout the world in general. We'll get to as much of it as we possibly could, can, excuse me, but coming up next, Mike Royal and Kevin Falkenberg from Twin Tiers Comic Con. So stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking on WYDC TV, Big Fox. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Akam, and we are broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio here on Marcus Street in Corning. And I want to thank our guests from the Twin Tiers Comic Con. Good morning, guys. Good morning. We have a lot to cover. First, I think this is a simple question, but some people may not be aware of what a Comic Con is. Tell us. Sure. Uh, Comic Con is, well, our show specifically is a two day celebration. Some Comic Cons run longer, some shorter. Um, it is a celebration of all things art and comics and anime and video gaming and horror and sci fi and fantasy and, and all of the, the buzzwords that go along with it. <laughs> what sparked the idea for you to start a Comic Con in the Twin Tiers? Um, so many years ago, uh, I went to a large Comic Con event in uh, Orlando. Um, fell in love with it, okay. and then a friend of ours who owns a comic shop locally um, mentioned maybe trying to do an event, and I, I thought it sounded like a great idea, but I knew I didn't have all the skills needed to make it great, so <laughs> I took talked to Kevin in the street in Elmira Heights and said, hey, Kevin, you want to do this? And he said, sure, and then that's how it began. And the rest <laughs> is history, right? <laughs> Can you believe you've been doing it? Uh, this will be the seventh convention? So this will be the, go ahead. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, so this will be, we've been doing it for nine years, but obviously with, with the pandemic and everything, this would be our, I think, our eighth show. Oh, okay. We, uh, we did 14 through, uh, 2014 through 2017 at the arena, um, and then we did, uh, we, we did a stripped-down show. I was, long story short, I had a day job that was, I was working out of town in 2018, um, so we did kind of a stripped-down show at Elmira High School in 2018, and then 19 was the first year that we did at the, uh, at the Arnett Mall Event Center. So, and that's been going great. And then we came back, obviously, with the pandemic. We came back in 22. So, this one will be our eighth, I believe. Yeah. From the first one to today, how much has it changed? It's, it's changed quite a bit. Yeah. So, because we, when we first started, we weren't quite Twin Tiers Comic Con. We were, we had a different name, smaller show. Started at an Elks Lodge. Oh, okay. So we started at a, you know, in a very small space, and now we're, you know, over fifty thousand square foot of, uh, of pop culture fun. So it's, uh, it's changed quite a bit since yeah. the early years. Yeah. What should people know that have never attended a Comic Con? Oh gosh, um, it is, it's a trip. We. Uh, I, I remember going back to when we were first starting the Twin Tiers Comic Con branded version um, in 2014. We had met with the first arena, and they had no idea what <laughs> to even expect. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where you can explain it and explain it, but until you're there in the room and, and experiencing everything going on around you, that's when everybody's like, "Oh, I get it!" Like this is just like because um, most people think that it's like ah, I don't really like comic books and it's like no it's not just comic books it's everything it's if you have a TV show that you love there's a uh, hundred thousand other people that also love that TV show sure and they will turn out in costume for their favorite character some of them show up in costumes of characters on TV shows from 30 years ago and it's just like you know it's it's celebration uh, of everything that is uh, pop culture and tell us you mentioned costumes there is a costume contest correct yes Yep. So uh, we do a costume contest. We actually do two. We do an adult contest that's uh, for ages 12 and over okay. with $1,000 in cash prizes. Wow. Um, four different categories. Um, and then we also do on Sunday, we do a kids contest for 11 and under uh, non-cash prizes. We do some prize baskets and things like that um, for the for the younger kids. Yeah. And looking at your website, people can see it there on the bottom of the screen. Uh, a lot of celebrity guests this year. Is that difficult to book these celebrity guests? It can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depends on who it is, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It depends on, uh, obviously, there's uh, uh, financials and pricing involved with it. There's there's agents. There's um, travel schedules. And uh, some of them have uh, shooting schedules. We actually, we've been pretty lucky since we started in 2014. Um, last year was the first time we actually had a celebrity, knock on wood, uh, celebrity guest uh, cancel. Um, oh, okay. Just because of uh, health, you know, illness thing. Um, so it was... It was different. It was a, a different experience for sure. Great. Can I take a short break? 
Sure. All right. Yeah. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV. Big Fox, stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Akam, and we're broadcasting from the Hasselson Studio here on Marcus Street in Corning. Our guests are from Twin Tiers Comic Con. You can find out more at the website there on your screen. How much planning goes into this? Uh, about a year for each show. Okay? Oh, okay. We start pretty much right after the show ends. We'll start laying the groundwork about three months in. It starts to pick up more, and then the last six months is pretty pretty heavy planning. How how's it feel right now as you're about to kick off? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's fun. It's, yeah. uh, it's it's fun. It's uh, it's hectic. It's a little crazy. There's a lot of anxiety, but uh, it's a good time. Do you have uh, a moment to breathe where you can actually go around and enjoy the the festivity, so to speak? Usually, yeah. yeah. Um, provided there aren't any fires to put out. Again, knocking on wood. Um, <laughs> we uh, I, we try to make. I know Mike tries to go around and, and visit as many tables as he can. Uh, I try to do the same. There are also um, we we have part of the show is we have a, a panel room that we kind of do Q and A panels and things like that where people can can ask questions to the to the guests and different either artists or celebrities. And there there are some of those panels that I like moderating myself just because it kind of gives me a chance to kind of step back a little bit and say, okay, from this time to this time, I'm not doing anything else. I'm just doing this. Yeah. I have responsibilities. The, yeah, sure. Instead of running around the show floor like a, like a madman. <laughs> and doing the research for this interview, I wanted to mention uh, pricing because this is very affordable, especially considering how much stuff there is to do. Yeah, so we, we, we try to keep it affordable, um, and we try to make sure that we have two days of entertainment with the ticket price. So, you know, when you buy the ticket, mm -hmm. you have access to the panel Q&As on both days. We have contests like a Pokemon hunt, a scavenger hunt. We have free board gaming demos in our board gaming area all weekend. Our kids zone is packed with free activities from nonprofit organizations and business that are going to offer some free stuff to oh. do. So you can spend two days there with the ticket price. And then we also have all the other amazing things that will cost some additional money, like photos, opportunities, autographs with celebrities, you know, merchandise and art sales from our artists and, and our vendors. So you have you have the option to both, you know, come in and, and do two days of entertainment and also leave with a bunch of extra swag. And I love that this is my favorite movie of all time, The Blues Brothers. I love that you guys have a Blues Brothers connection this year. Yes, very cool. Yes, we're getting the Blues Mobile, and also um, one of our guests, yeah. Stephen Williams, was played one of the police officers in, in the Blues Brothers. Yeah, and he, uh, along with a hundred other credits to his to his name. Amazing. And, and also, list. I wanted to, to mention uh, with with all the free activities we do, and and how the celebrities might charge for autographs or photo ops, but we always we get this question almost every year. And if anybody just wanted to meet a celebrity and shake their hand. That is totally free. They don't charge for that oh, sort really? of thing. Oh, it's only for the autograph and photo op and things like that. So. And I notice on some of the, the celebrity lists, you have a lot of Excite Wrestling. So tell me uh, how that ties in with the Twin Tiers Comic Con. Yes. So between last year's show and this year's show, um, the Excite group moved in uh, right next door to the event center. There's kind of like a, a, a half wall that they put up with a door and there's now a wrestling ring on that portion of the of the floor um, so we're basically going to be using that as our panel room so we're they're going to be taking down the ropes from the ring and the, the, we'll have tables set up and people will actually be doing the panels in the wrestling ring which will be to totally different but what a great idea it, it'll act as a stage so it's perfect yeah. um, and then we'll also be doing kind of uh, uh, superhero wrestlers wrestlers will dress up as superheroes we'll do superhero fighting um, throughout <laughs> the day on Saturday and Sunday or just Saturday, Saturday and just Sunday. just yeah. Saturday and Sunday yeah um, and then uh, Saturday night actually excite has shifted their schedule so they they do a monthly event at the arena at their arena at the the mall and they're actually going to be doing their November show the night of our Saturday night show on, on the 11th. They'll That's be doing a great event, idea. So, so it's kind of partnering up. And we figured, why not bring out as many people as we can? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, mm -hmm. we have, they helped us bring in five wrestling guests as well. <laughs> so oh, really? From, yeah, from the 80s and 90s. And even uh, one guest that was uh, popular in the 2000s. So, and even currently. So. Wow. Yeah. There really is something for everyone at this. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, there is. <laughs> now, I noticed on the website that you uh, are always in need of volunteers. Is it too late to volunteer if someone contacts you? It's never too late. <laughs> uh, you can go right to our website, and we've got a tab on there if you're interested in volunteering. Mm -hmm. uh, you fill out a little uh, application. It comes in, and, uh, yeah, it's never too late. We're always looking for volunteers. All right, so last couple questions here. What does your Monday feel like when it's all over? 
Well, it doesn't actually end for us. Oh, <laughs> so on Monday, we're usually doing a bunch of post-show stuff, cleaning up some things, putting things away, transporting guests to wherever they got to go next. Um, so there's usually a bunch of stuff that we're still doing on Monday. It doesn't sure. end for us on Sunday night. Um, but Tuesday, generally, we're just about done, and that feels pretty good. At least can sleep in <laughs> on Tuesday, right. Uh, what are you looking for, and this is for both of you, what are you looking forward to the most? Oh, wow. Um <laughs> I look forward to, uh, I mean, it, it's it's a very stressful uh, year planning this whole thing, but I always love the moment where um, it's usually about midday on Saturday when the place is just packed and there's, you know, thousands of people floating around in the mall, which is such a great sight mm -hmm. just in general. And it, it's cool to just kind of look around and be like, oh, yeah, like I created something that like thousands of people are loving today and yeah. it's just it feels really good yeah that's, and that's, then that's, and then the after party eh? the after party oh sure well, that's yeah. <laughs> no, yeah no that's what it is. it's it's seeing like all the the smiling faces mm -hmm. it's a very positive atmosphere like mo almost all comic cons are but ours particularly and that to, to to bring that kind of joy to so many people that's that's the fun part that's that's kind of why we do yeah. this and this really is for all ages yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think you do. You already mentioned the the free kids tickets, right? Yeah. Kids so, fourteen oh, no, under. We actually free. didn't talk about the tickets yet, but oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah for, all kids fourteen and under are free with uh, an adult ticket holder, um, and then, uh, but yeah, we have stuff for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like you know, this year we'll have uh, you know the uh, the car from Christine, an actress from Christine. That's, that's cool. that target demographic is going to be you know you know uh, uh, folks that are a little older because mm -hmm. that's an older film. Um, you know, there's uh, there's really is things for all ages at the show yeah what goes into the decision to, to pick a celebrity you just made me think of that because sometimes there seems to be a yeah. theme but it's been so different through the years yeah so it has and, and this year we we played around with uh trying to to pair vehicles with celebrities oh, okay so like we've got two of our celebrities have been in supernatural so we've got the impala here we talked about Stephen Williams being in Blues Brothers, mm -hmm. kind of pairs with the Blues Mobile, the two actors from Christine with Christine. Sometimes that stuff just kind of falls in place okay. organically. Sometimes you kind of have to try to make it happen, and we're trying to, to play around with, with that type of uh, an idea, and we'll see how it goes going forward. Um, but sometimes you, you meet the right folks yeah. um, at another show, or you find an agent that represents some people. You do a show with them. They have a bunch of other clients, and you kind of – form a relationship to bring in clients the following year so sure. yeah there's there's different ways it, it goes about yeah and i would like to mention big fox is going to be in attendance so stop by the table yes. say hi to josh i think he's going to have some frankly speaking stickers perhaps so everybody say hi to josh and guys let me just be not probably the first to say this but good luck thank you enjoy it i hope that you have a moment to enjoy <laughs> it and I, I can't wait to talk to you about the ninth next year yeah yeah we're very excited. It's uh, we've already started. Uh, Mike mentioned that that we spend a year planning this, but we've already started talking to people to book for next year. So it's like now it's overlapping year wow. to year. Yeah. So it's wow. it's a lot. It's a lot of planning, but it's it it's uh, amazing. It's yeah. just amazing when the event is is live and going on. There's there's nothing like it. Yeah. Well, so. good luck, guys. Yeah. All right, Thank you. we'll okay. be right back. Oh. Did we forget something? I was going to mention the veterans. Oh, yeah, that's right. We didn't yeah. How yeah. Could, I, all weekends that we don't mention that. <laughs> please, please do Gosh. tell us. Yeah. So, um, you know, just uh, all veterans and active duty military are free with your ID. Oh, um, so all you have to do is show up with an ID and you're get, you'll get wristbanded. Um, so that's, that, that. yeah, we're good. Perfect. All right. <laughs> well, that does it for this interview. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Hakem. Thanks again to our guests, Kevin and Mike from the Twin Tiers Comic Con. I received a message during break. Please ask them who some of the artists have contributed to what comic series. I apologize, I didn't get to that question. And Really, the, and I'm going to take full responsibility for this. When we first uh, started talking about the interview, I said, let's not get into a laundry list of all the guests and vendors because it, it is extensive. Uh, that's why I put the website up on the bottom of the screen uh, so you can go there to find the information. It is remarkable how many vendors, how many artists, how many uh, celebrities there are. And I was afraid that if we got into that, you don't want to miss one, right? 
uh, and, and omit somebody accidentally. So that's, again, I'm taking full responsibility for that. Um, but I, you can find it for yourself on the website. Um, so we have a, a couple of comments also uh, unrelated to Comic-Con I wanted to get to. First one up. Vivek Ramaswamy, in my opinion, did more damage than good for getting votes in yesterday's debate. A lot of people having that same opinion, saying he was kind of um, arrogant and smug. The next comment. I'm daydreaming about wild potential running mates. Scenarios, excuse me. If Nikki Haley and Tim Scott paired up and had Trump's endorsement, it could possibly bring long needed relief for voters from both sides that are tired of the two old presidents fighting. Okay, that's fair. I, it, they continue after. I'm thinking that Trump could still be active, work behind the scenes, and people would be more apt to wake up from the hate and start to think more rationally. Thank you for those comments. Keep them coming in. You see the number on the bottom of the screen. We'll try to get to as many of them as we can before the program is through. Okay, back to the debate and back to really one of the um, viewers who commented, one of uh, kind of the same opinion. This coming from the New York Post. Impressive, Nikki Haley. She shines. Stupid, this is New York Post's opinion. Stupid, Vivek self-destructs. A Republican consultant, Bob Ryan, said he was way too hot and way too nasty. As sanctimonious and tedious as ever, said a Democrat consultant. Um, and yeah, a lot of people are saying going after Nikki Haley's daughter was not the smartest move. And if you didn't catch that, that's kind of, for lack of a better term, the takeaway from the debate. It's uh, what most outlets are focusing on. And they're talking about TikTok. And uh, Ramaswamy was asked, how can you ban TikTok when you are prolific at it, when you use it a lot. And the, I should I should have it here. Yeah, here's the exact quote, because I don't want to put words in his mouth. He he mentions Nikki Haley's own daughter is on TikTok, even though she calls for banning TikTok, and said, quote, so you might want to take care of your family first. Haley uh, did not take kindly. Those were fighting words. She said, leave my daughter out of your voice. And when the crowd booed, he went on further and saying, you have her supporters propping her up, meaning the people that are booing in the crowd. That's fine. Here's the truth. And Nikki Haley got so mad. She said, you're just scum to Ramaswamy. Now, many people saying that that was a mistake from Ramaswamy going after. And I, and I think there's a point there going after the family. Um, many also not happy with the whole um, Dick Cheney and heels comments. Uh, but the common theme seems to be that Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis had a good night. Uh, and that Vivek Ramaswamy not doing much. And that uh, Scott and Christy should really step aside. Now, one of the biggest issues that many uh, are talking about in the political world is how Republicans hone their message on abortion. <clears throat> Stephen Collinson, who again, would never want to see Republican win, so you've got to take this with a grain of salt, said Republicans flail on abortion as Democrats embrace a top 2024 issue. And what he's signaling is something that we've been saying for a very long time on this program is that Democrats are going to make that uh, the number one issue going into the election. And we've got, because they believe, and looking at um, the votes, they believe that it's a winning issue. And if you look at the past few elections by state, it has been. Now you can look at New York and say, uh, the governor Hochul, when she ran, she focused on abortion and not on uh, safety, public safety. And it really hurt her, though she ultimately won. It led to Lee Zeldin uh, getting better numbers focused on public safety. But I'll, I'll continue just, I'm not going to go through Stephen Collison's piece. We've spent enough time on CNN, but Democrats throw 2024 abortion messaging into high gear. That's the takeaway from there. So Republicans need to be perhaps better. And it is kind of surprising. They're not better at it uh, to some level. And the reason I say that is it's a question Republicans get asked abortion. Um, are you pro-choice? You know, are you pro-life? They get asked that question if you're practically running for dog catcher. So really, at this level, they should be prepared. 
but even the New York Post editorial board saying election night 2023 shows Republicans still haven't figured out how to handle abortion. So this isn't about the debate specifically, but about um, the election results on Tuesday. Republicans had yet another disappointing election night Tuesday, and abortion was plainly a major factor. Now, we're not going to go through all the numbers. We went through those yesterday. But that still leaves the GOP having to figure out an approach to state-level races where the issue is very much a live one. For now, that's going to be some combination of trial and error and time. Less than two years after the Supreme Court threw abortion law back to the states, most of the country is still figuring out what to think about an issue most people don't want to think about. Okay, now back to the debate, but that's just something we're going to have to be prepared to hear a lot about, and we'll have to see how these candidates and the former president, Trump, how they hone their message on it, because the Democrats will be running on that, of course that, and that uh, Trump and Republicans are a threat to democracy. Those are the two big takeaways, I think, pretty easy to predict. The debate proves, according to Isaac Shore, that it's time for others to step aside and make it DeSantis and Haley. That's a common refrain as well, but the time has come for egos to be put aside and quests for cabinet positions to be given up. Basic math and patriotic duty demand that those without a chance of saving the country from a Trump-Biden rematch at least refrain from condemning it to so to such a calamity. What do you think? Well, we're going to get away from the debate, but thank you so far, uh, so much for the comments so far. I really appreciate it. Thank you again to Kevin and Mike from Twin Tiers Comic Con for being on the program. Keep those comments coming in. We're going to switch to what Hillary Clinton had to say about a potential uh, Trump presidency. Also, a couple of quick hits before we go. So stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV. Big Fox will be right back. What a beautiful view of Market Street here in downtown Corning. Broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio, I'm your host, Frank Acom. This is Frankly Speaking on Big Fox. So Hillary Clinton was on The View. And she warned that Trump would be, quote, even worse during a second term as president of the United States. That, the hyperbole, the the way to divide this country is that they try in an attempt and succeed so far to divide this country. That, quote, it would be the end of our country as we know it. So this goes back to the point I was making that this, the Trump campaign is going to be attacked as a threat to democracy. Abortion is going to be a major issue as well. Um, But that's Hillary Clinton on The View. Now, she also said, and I I don't like when any side does this, comparing essentially the former president to Adolf Hitler. Hillary, she was asked by Sonny Hoist, and again, this is on The View, about if Trump gets reelected. She said, oh, I can't even. I can't even think that because I think it would be the end of our country as we know it. And I don't say that lightly. You know, I hated losing. And I especially hated losing to him because I had seen so many warning signals during the campaign. Listen to this part. But I immediately said, look, we have to give him a chance. Did that happen? That or uh, rewriting history a little bit there? We've got to support, you know, the president we have. And I meant it, and I tried really hard. I mean, that's just hoping that you weren't paying attention with, uh, you know, Russia. You know, all we don't have to relitigate it, but don't pretend that you were supportive of Trump when he got in. But that's not the whole reason why I'm bringing this up. She said, and you could see in countries where, well, Hitler was duly elected. That's right, right. And so all of a sudden, somebody with those tendencies, so dictatorial, authoritarian tendencies, would be like, oh, okay, we're going to shut this down. We're going to throw these people in jail. They didn't usually telegraph that. Trump is telling us what he intends to do. Now, just to show you how fair uh, the view is, Sonny Hoyston said, need to listen to that. You need to listen to that. (laughs) Just echoing and clapping along like a seal. 
Hillary Clinton said, so listen, take him at his word. The man means to throw people in jail who disagree with him. Shut down legitimate press outlets. Do what he can to literally undermine the rule of law and our country's values. We could dissect that last sentence uh, for quite some time, but I'll let it speak for itself. You can weigh in on it as we wrap up. We've got to take one last short break. Please stay with us. We'll be back with Frankly Speaking here on Big Fox. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on Big Fox. A few last things to wrap up before we end today's edition of Frankly Speaking. Minnesota court dismissed the 14th Amendment case. The 14th Amendment case was to block former President Trump from being on the primary ballot. Um, these type of things, in my opinion, I've said it before, play right, for lack of a better term, it has a negative connotation, but I don't mean it that way, plays right into the hand of what Trump says. What did he say at his rally yesterday? Uh, I'm being indicted for you. Uh, this plays into, they feel, this would be the argument, they feel that they can't win legitimately, so they have to use the courts. And it's funny, going back to Hillary Clinton's point about uh, the rule of law, right? And you see how some would argue that they've manipulated that rule of law to go after Trump and the idea of our country's values and getting the norms. Well, look how much um, that's been attacked. But anyway, I, I, we, we don't have time to go on a tangent. But they did block the, uh, or dismiss, I should say, the 14th Amendment case. Okay, really interesting piece by uh, the New York Post, and it's by Douglas Schoen and Andrew Stein. I'm going to put it up on the screen because we don't have time to get to it. But as Democrats, we implore the party, get rid of the anti-Semitic squad. After Hamas's October 7th atrocities, we immediately thought no reasonable person could do anything but condemn the terrorist group in the strongest words possible. And yet Congress's progressive squad has not only refused to condemn Hamas, its vile anti-Semitism threatens the Democrat Party, the United States, and Israel. And its hateful rhetoric endangers millions of Jewish Americans. It is a really good piece. Uh, it just wraps up with, ultimately, as lifelong Democrats, we must say enough is enough. It's time to fire the squad. We implore the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and outside PACs not to support offensive outliers whose positions contradict the core values of our party and our country. We implore voters to send them home. Their positions are deeply out of sync with mainstream Americans and will tarnish the entire Democratic Party if we allow them to remain under the Democratic banner. By the way, we didn't have a chance to mention it, but I'm sure you're well aware by now, House Republicans have subpoenaed Hunter and James Biden in the impeachment inquiry. Committee Chairman James Comer said the House Oversight Committee has followed the money and built a record of evidence revealing how Joe Biden knew, was involved, and benefited from his family's influence peddling schemes. Now the House Oversight Committee is going to bring in members of the Biden family and their associates to question them on this record of evidence. Okay, we are out of time for today's edition of Frankly Speaking. Thank you to everybody who joined us. Thank you to everybody who sent in comments. I also like to thank, of course, our guests, Mike Royal and Kevin Falkenberg from Twin Tiers Comic Con, and that is this weekend at the Arnett Mall. You can find out more at TwinTiersComicCon.com. That's a mouthful. Have a great day, everyone. We will be back tomorrow morning, bright and early, with Frankly Speaking, starting at 7, only on WYDC-TV, Big Fox.